don't even know what a gas shortage means. Cha-ching! <laughs> Didn't mean yeah. to start the show with that. <laughs> uh, let's let's focus uh, on the weather because that is a, uh, a bright spot on this right. Thursday here. I'll, I'll dampen literally. the mood down quickly first, and then we'll go back. Yeah, there we to go. The yeah, things. see, we teed uh, you up for positivity. Downtown, uh -huh. right by where I live. A gallon of gas is 425. Mm. It's up over four. Oh man. Uh, you 425. Know, that's why I get my gas yes. at Costco. It's Hybrid painful. Cars, I fill up that tank and it's like <laughs> 70 bucks. It's mm. horrible. Yeah, you have a, a forerunner. I have a forerunner, yeah, runner, forerunner. So, and it's a gas guzzler. So mm. I have to say, I mean, it's not, you know, not my fault. Well, it is partially my fault. <laughs> EV time for you. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. It's a cool car though. It has that back window that opens. <gasps> I, I love, love that. it. <laughs> it's the best foreigner. It's my favorite car. Uh, good morning, everyone. Let's, uh, you know, pick things back up from here. 601 right now. Beautiful views outside. We've got some stand up paddle boarders out there. We've got some surfers. It's a beautiful, beautiful start uh, to your morning. Temperatures this afternoon warming up into the 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, you heard that right. 98 for the deserts, 90 inland, 85 for the mountains. Looks like across the coast will be in the upper 70s and low 80s for most of the day. Next five days take us to warmer temperatures again tomorrow. We've got about 15, 20 degrees above average of trends for your Friday, and then we cool down with some clouds for the weekend. Balance out toward the beginning of next week with partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies and temperatures about average. Jenny, over to you. Well, hi, still a nice commute out there. Travel times, they are not an issue. South on the 805 at Maine. If you've been with us in the 530 hour, you've heard me mention that fire off to the right hand shoulder. I believe it's a car fire totally under control, but crews may be blocking that shoulder. Little bit of a pickup on the bridge, nothing too major and North County drivers, you're in luck because everything is fine. Back to you. Well, San Diego making progress now in COVID vaccination efforts. Over 1 million San Diegans are now fully vaccinated. Like that number, plus one local school is holding a vaccination event for teenagers today. And we have team coverage this morning. Allison Royal is taking a look at the push to vaccinate teens. But we begin with Chris Crow. He has more on how the county is making it easier for more people to get their shot. Chris. Hey, good morning, Eric and Netta. And look, when we hit that more than 1 million uh, county residents vaccinated mark here. It, it's a good thing and it does have a trickle down impact to how the county will continue to try to vaccinate the rest of the residents for those that do wish to continue to get vaccinated. Essentially what we're seeing is there is an availability in appointments that we really haven't seen since the vaccine rollout has happened. That's because so many people are now off the market, so to speak. And so in an effort to make sure that people are aware of those appointments, but then also trying to make sure that people know that they don't need appointments, the county is shifting how things are working. People can now walk in and get a shot at all 23 county vaccine sites. That is a huge change because prior you needed that appointment. Something else the county is considering. Several vaccination sites will soon expand hours to 8 p.m. Plus, there could soon be a 24 hour vaccination site as well. Again, all of this being done in an effort to try to get even more people vaccinated because in order to reach herd immunity, the county estimates more than 2 million residents, 75% of them 16 and older, will need to be fully vaccinated in order to get to that mark. Our message to San Diegans today is there are now vaccines available. Uh, both via the appointment system and via the drop-in uh, alternative at 23 different locations throughout San Diego County. And so we encourage uh, a lot of folks that may have gotten frustrated with an inability to, to get a spot to uh, go to our uh, website, vaccinationsuperstationsd.com, look at the array, the times, the locations, um, and please, uh, please take advantage of those. And something that's really key to point out there, expanding not only the fact to walk-ins, but also expanding hours. That's going to be key because for a lot of people, they maybe haven't gotten their vaccine yet because they work odd hours or haven't been able to find time. A lot of people have been having to stay home to take care of their children who aren't in school, things like that. So now this is going to open up a lot of availability, a lot of hours for people so that we can get to that herd immunity mark. Now, something else that's going to play a key role in this, teens getting vaccinated as well too. And Allison Royal has that part of the story. Allison. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, so it is pretty quiet right now here in National City, but come eight o'clock, it will be a different story. A few hundred teenagers here have decided to go ahead and get vaccinated, and there were options to have their parents come along as well, if they're also interested in getting vaccinated. Now, the appointments are required here for this event and for this site. It is part of National City's 100-day vaccination campaign that Mayor Alejandro Sotelo Solis has been promoting. So right now, vaccine eligibility is open 
open in California for people ages 16 and up. That opened up two weeks ago. This event today is here for the Pfizer vaccine. Of course, Pfizer is approved for people ages 16 and up if they so choose, while the other ones, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, are for people 18 and up. During Wednesday's county COVID-19 briefing, County Public Health Officer Dr. Wilma Wooten said the county will start vaccinating kids as young as 12 years old pretty soon. Now, keep in mind, according to County Public Health data, zero children throughout this entire pandemic have died between the ages of zero and nine, and then two people have died between the ages of 10 and 19 over the past of this one plus year or pandemic. So while the risk to young people is close to zero, one local family here in San Diego County said that they felt it was the safest decision to go ahead and get their teenage daughter vaccinated. In our biggest fear with with young people is that uh, they could get the virus and we didn't know it and they pass it on to someone else that it, they, they have a much bigger reaction. Second appointments will also be available here on May 20th for those that are interested after getting that first dose of the Pfizer vaccine today. Netta and Eric. Allison, thank you for that update. Now today officially marks President Joe Biden's 100th day in office and he will head to Georgia to kick off what the White House is calling the Get America Back on Track tour. This comes after the president delivered his first address to a joint session of Congress last night. Now, President Biden urging lawmakers to take action on gun control, immigration, and police reform. He also worked to sell his massive infrastructure proposal and his new plan for families and education. And for the first time, you see right here, two women sat behind the president as he spoke, Vice President Kamala Harris and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Now, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina delivered the Republican response. We're going to take a closer look at the president's claims as well as Senator Scott's response all coming up in a Verify report. Eric. Thanks, Nada. More relief may be on the way for local restaurants still reeling from closures and restrictions caused by the pandemic. Today, Supervisor Jim Desmond is expected to announce a proposal to waive permit fees for all restaurants for the fiscal year 2021-22. The county board is expected to vote on the measure next Wednesday. Lifeguards are on alert after a small cliff collapse in Encinitas. Chopper 8 was overhead shortly after this happened yesterday afternoon. This is near Tower 16 at the south end of the campground at Cardiff State Beach. Lifeguards responded and are looking into what caused that collapse. No one was hurt. And yeah, it, it, you really, really made me jealous, Evan, off the top of the show. People <laughs> are paddle boarding and surfing right now. I know, it's isn't pretty, it great? It just awesome. feels like, I mean, it's already mid-50s right now. I know it's a bit <laughs> chilly in some spots as we start off the morning, but I mean, the sun is starting to beam through. We're going to warm up relatively quickly, making our way to the 70s, 80s, 90s. It's going to feel a lot like summer. So I know I threw around uh, AC earlier, and in some cases, maybe necessary, at least inland, by uh, this afternoon, as well as tomorrow afternoon. Where we make our way into the 80s. Like I mentioned, some spots are colder than others. Ramona right now is at 39 degrees. Poway at 46. Uh, Carlsbad is at 57. So you may notice that about 20 degree temperature difference between, say, Ramona and Julian and Borrego Springs is at 60 degrees. These temperatures are at least warmer than where we were at this time yesterday morning. You see the 24 hour temperature change points to three, four, maybe seven degrees warmer as Carlsbad is or 11 in Fallbrook uh, by the afternoon, especially over the next several hours. We'll see that map continuously build and we'll see by the afternoon 10 degrees warmer than yesterday, for example, where and it was still warm out there. We are still going to keep gaining some momentum throughout the next uh, several days. View outside at Mount Woodson is beautiful. A lot of orange and uh, pink tones coming through. Warming trend builds throughout your day today and your Friday. Slightly cooler as we head into the weekend. We'll see partly cloudy conditions as well and about average temperatures into the beginning of next week. If not, maybe a few degrees above average. Partly cloudy, mostly sunny. Next eight days include plenty of dry weather out there. So it's a beautiful forecast. Make sure to spend some time outside. Jenny